Welcome to another video of Ultimate JavaScript Tutorials. Today we are going to do a super simple tutorial of the Angular Material button click event, and really this applies to any Angular button. However, um, I like to use Angular Material. It's something I'm going to really explore in this channel. So what we're going to do is simply add a click event here, and we are going to bind it to an onClick function and um, so that will be our handler. I'm going to pass in the event and so on this side in the HTML in our template here then that is all the code that we need for a simple binding and then on this side over here in our event button button.ts file here inside of our class what I'm going to do is add the onClick function and so I'm going to um, pass in the event and I am just going to give it a TypeScript typing of event. So this is an interface. Uh, I'll click into that in just a moment. But let's just show that we can console log our event here. And so we'll take a look in just a moment at what gets printed out. But let's dig into this event. So we can actually, I'm using IntelliJ. It's got some handy tools for digging into your type definition files. So I can see that event is an interface. It's ultimately extending this event object or type really and so we can see that there's all this um, typing that is probably something you're familiar with if you've done much web development we see current target we see um, stop propagation and stop immediate propagation all the usual very helpful fields and functions that you expect to be inside of event objects now let's go take a look at how this runs in our app I'm going to open up DevTools here and we'll dig in so we can see our event did get logged, so that's all good. We can see the useful things that we expect, like a client X and Y, which is the actual coordinates of the click. Uh, we can see the target. I expect that there is some inner HTML and inner text if we can find them. Here they are, ultimate button. And so that's really the basics of it, but there's a little bit more that we can dig into. So sometimes it's hard to find the exact syntax for doing something like, say, passing in another prop. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to pass in this prop name test, and it didn't like that I had quotes, double quotes, um, around my string here. So if we want to pass in another parameter, then this is all it takes. However, it's giving us a typing error that um, the function on click expects only one argument, but we pass two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it know that there is going to be some other kind of parameter and that it's going to be of type string and you know what i'm just going to call it param2 so that it's not confusing that the parameter name was string the value name was string and that i i mean excuse me test and that i passed in a string with the text of test so here i'll just name it param2 and i will console log the second param here inside of uh, console log not just um, on its own. So there we go. Let's take a look at that in the code. And now um, my app auto updated for me, which is really nice. So I'm still logging that event object there. And I'm also logging that text that we passed in. So pretty straightforward to be able to pass a second parameter. Now let's try something really interesting. Um, what I'm going to do is I am going to add a color value here. So I will say color equals primary over here. And um, let's see, inside of our event button HTML, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this. And instead of having that, what I'm going to do is I am going to take that color attribute, um, that color value that we're passing in, and then binding to our button here. Then um, I am going to, over here, say that our click is going to reset the color value to, let's just say, the accent value. So let's give that a try and see what happens. Now, by default, you can see that this is purple now. Our button is purple because by default, I have the purple and green theme set as the theme for my app. So now let's see what happens when I click. So you can see that it only changed once because on click, we set the color value to accent and there's no reverting it that we, you know, there's no code for reverting it. But just as easy as that, then we were able to 
um, set that color value without an actual function over here in our event button.ts file. So pretty cool. So you can have some logic over here in your template. So that's how you set up a click handler. And really it's the exact same thing for, let's say you had like mouse down, um, you can, I'll even give this my on click handler if it, uh, if VS code cooperates here. And then I have two parameters expected so I can pass that in. Um, so we can see that both of these things will happen. Our app has refreshed now. So the click handler actually changed that button color and then the mouse down called on click and set these values over here um, and log these values over here in our console. So mouse down, mouse up, mouse over, mouse out. There's a whole bunch of different events that the button can um, fire. And so um, some pretty cool stuff. I should say that the mouse can fire on the button. So anyway, um, there's full code for this demo with quite a few more events um, kind of expanded on. In my video details, you can get the link to that full code from uh, my video details. And so definitely check that out if you wanted to copy paste the code or something like that. But uh, I hope that this video is helpful. Please do consider subscribing to my very new channel, Ultimate JavaScript Tutorials. Thank you.